Now, if you refuse to give them your guns, if you say no, then you violated it. You've now become a criminal in essence because you violated a court order, so that's a misdemeanor. Now, if I go out to say you're under arrest yeah. and you pull away or you, now you've just committed a felony. Now you're resisting. Now you're resisting and now that's a felony. This is going to be a long form video about red flag laws. Now, particularly we're talking about Michigan. However, I think these topics are germane to all 50 of these United States, whether you have red flag laws now or you could live anywhere in the United States and red flag laws could be pending. That's just the way it is nowadays. Feel free to chime into the comments as we do this video, as Bob and I are having this discussion, and let me know what you guys think, and also let me know if you have any other questions or suggestions for next time I go to Lansing, Michigan. And I think this is one of the most thorough discussions that you're going to see on the internet about this very dangerous topic, these red flag laws. So please share this with all of your friends and family so they know what's going on and they can think about all of the implications and if you'd like to help support the channel check the description down below and also you can check out representative bob bazat's website so now we see legislation that's going to come forward next week it's going to attack the first amendment there we go there we go yep it's one thing after another now that they're going after the guns yeah. um and now they're going to be going after uh free speech <laughs> in our country right now is in, is in peril whether people realize it or not Hey guys, so I'm here in Lansing, Michigan with my friend, Michigan Representative Bob Bazat. How's it going? Good. How are you doing today? Good. Look, there's a lot of stuff to talk about, but we're going to talk about the red flag laws that have passed. Yeah. And a lot of people have some worries. Now, I think you're an interesting person to talk about this because before you were a state representative, you were a county commissioner. Yes. And before that, you were the Livingston County Sheriff, right? Correct. So... Red flag laws. We already kind of know what it is. We've talked about it a ton, guys. If you're new here, go watch my other videos. But a red flag law, it's basically a new law, but it's a civil procedure, right? Yes. Where somebody can, what do they call them, the plaintiff, or they're called something that... Well, the, uh, the person that the uh, petition is signed against, you know, is, uh, would probably be the plaintiff. Yeah. And then, but there, there's, the problem with this whole process is there's no due process. And like an ex-girlfriend, an ex-wife, ex-boyfriend, a family member, it, and we see this all the time in divorce cases where people are mad at somebody, so they file fictitious complaints. Yes. And that's what's going to happen here. And we've already seen this happen in Maryland where a 61-year-old uh, was killed. Uh, they showed up at his doorstep, told him they were there. He was a danger to himself and to the public. They were there to take his guns. One thing led to another. They ended up shooting and killing him. And that happened about, it's been about six six weeks or two months ago. And that's my fear here, is that without due process, a police officer can show up on your doorstep and tell you that they're here because you're a danger to yourself and danger to the public and take all your guns. Now, if you refuse to give them your guns, if you say no, then you violated it. You've now become a criminal in essence because you violated a court order so that's a misdemeanor now if i go out to say you're under arrest yeah. and you pull away or you now you've just committed a felony now you're resisting now you're resisting and now that's a felony so without due process you, you could potentially commit two crimes if you don't cooperate within a you know two minute span let's say and plus you're going to put and i've talked to so many police officers about this but you're going to put law enforcement at risk I mean, I, I wouldn't, being a sheriff and valuing my oath of office and, and uh, the Second Amendment, there's no way that I would show up on somebody's, and I wouldn't put my people in that position either to show up and, and uh, ex execute a court order that's unconstitutional, that I believe in my heart is unconstitutional, which it is. So somebody can petition and basically red flag you. There's a hearing, it's called an ex parte hearing, meaning you don't know that there's a hearing about you. The judge looks at it, but they don't have to look at it as beyond a reasonable doubt. It's not with a jury of your peers. There's a lower standard they use. So if you get successfully red flagged, which sounds rather easy, actually, because you can actually do judge shopping and go to different areas. That's another main concern. Because I can file a petition against you in Ann Arbor or Detroit, where I know the judges are more liberal. Uh, instead of, you, you could live in Livingston County, but I don't have to do it in Livingston County. 
And that's scary. That's very scary. Okay, and that's where I want you to come in with some of your past experience and expertise. So right now you're a state lawmaker. You, of course, voted against the red flag bill package, but it did unfortunately pass. Yes. It's now been signed into law by the governor. It's going to go into effect sometime early next year. Now, with that said, let's go back a couple of years when you were a county commissioner. I was there that day in Livingston County, and there's videos on this channel if you guys go back a couple of years, where as part of the Board of Commissioners, you voted to make it at that time a two-way sanctuary resolution, right? Well, right. actually, I, yeah, I did do that, but I also, I, I was the sponsor of the resolution. You were the one that brought that up. I'm the one that brought it forward. So, and I think it's important for the, for the public, the people that are constituents, the people that vote for us, it's important for them to know where you stand on these issues. Yeah. So it was important to us to, uh, to have a vote uh, on the Board of Commissioners because if you notice, we had, I might get this wrong, but I think it was what, was it 9-0 or was it 7-2? That one was that one was close, I believe, to being unanimous, if not unanimous. Okay, it's been a couple of years now. Because we had we had a couple of people that we knew ran as Republicans, but were Democrats. Yeah, so I'd, I'd have to go back and look at that. But it overwhelmingly passed, though, it for did, sure. It did. We were the seventeenth county. I wanted to be the first, but I didn't quite make it. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's important. That was a very important. On paper, you know, really doesn't do anything but make a statement of where your county board of commissioners stands on an issue. Yeah, which is very important, especially when you when you vote for them down the road. Okay, so we see many now are actually kind of upping it a little bit more since then. That was a few years ago. The Republicans were still in charge of the House and Senate at that time in Michigan. Lost the majority this last election. Right. Now people are kind of trying to harden up their counties a little more and passing some of these constitutional resolutions which Livingston just did a few weeks back. Yes. Now, they're basically pledging that they're not going to support any funding that's going to aid or abet, if you will, into any of these red flag laws, right? Right. Okay. Now, let's go back a little bit further in your career. Currently, the sitting sheriff in um, Livingston County, Sheriff Murphy. Yes. He's come out, and we were both at the 2A days in Fowlerville just a couple weeks back. Yes. He gave a speech there, and to sum it up, he said... He's not going to be executing these red flag laws, and he's not going to be sending his deputies out to do that. That's correct. So and the main purpose, two, two, two main main reasons why Mike took that position, and and I would take that position if I was still in office, was the the person that you're going out to take the weapons away does not have due process, and you you do not have the right to confront your accuser. They can remain anonymous through this whole thing. So that's an issue for me, because you, you should have a right to face your accuser in a court of law and be judged that way, yeah. not just a petition where anybody can go in and sign. Now, as I explained a few minutes ago, you could end up with a felony, uh, but if you cooperate, your guns are taken, now that's on your record forever. Even if you're found innocent, that's on your record forever. Now the victim, you being the victim of, of, uh, of the I guess the process without due process, um, the person that's filing this complaint, it's, it's a misdemeanor for them to file a false police report. Yes. But it's hard to prove. I mean, it's hard to prove because I think it says that they have to like knowingly or there's that type of element that they have to know they're falsely flagging you. Right. Well, years ago, I could have, I could have had a, you know, an argument with my, my spouse or my girlfriend and, and then they could come back and now say, well, I, I've always felt he's a danger. Um, and, and put you in a, a, the court system without, again, due process. And that's the crazy part. How could that go wrong in X, right? Yes. I mean, and it doesn't have a timeline. It doesn't say anyone you've dated in the last year or six months. This could be someone that dated somebody 60 years ago if they're elderly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it could really, really... Yeah, you could say, you know, 10 years ago, this guy demonstrated a violent temper, uh, threatened to hurt me, or you come up with all kinds of stuff. And how am I going to prove that didn't happen? You know what I'm saying? 10 years ago or 12 years ago. So there's no accountability. And you don't even get to go to the judge first with exculpatory evidence in your own defense. You have to come back and appeal after they've already taken all your guns. That's right. Now, I'm glad you mentioned that. You're the first person that's brought that up. So here's, here's where this is just crazy. They call it a civil matter. So you actually don't have the right to a court-appointed attorney. No. Nope. That's all going to be on your dime. Generally, most good lawyers will tell you it's not good to represent yourself. That's right. Now... If you violate the red flag law, or the extreme risk protection order, they call it, but it's a red flag. Yes. 
Now, if you violate that, then it does start to have criminal components to it, and yes. we know that. But you talked about how easy you can be criminalized when the police officer is coming to your front door. That's right. I didn't think about that. Well, and that's why it, it puts law enforcement, it puts the, um, the person at risk that the three mortar is against, it puts law enforcement at risk. I'm going to show up on your door and like what happened in Maryland, I'll use that as, a, as my example. They show up at 517 in the morning, get this guy out of bed and said, I'm here to take your guns. And you, you, you know, you're just waking up, you're thinking, what? Excuse me, I'm a law-abiding person. Yeah, why would you be here to take my guns? Why well, have a court order? The officer doesn't know really the facts of the case. He just got a court order instructing him to take your weapons. And it, it, the key is that it's you're at risk to yourself and to others. Now, this is one thing that they, they don't want to talk about on the other side of this issue is, I've just told you that you're at risk to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. I'm taking your gun. So mm -hmm. let's say you cooperate, give me my guns. And then you start thinking, what the heck did I do that for? But I've just told you, you're, you're, you're uh, a danger to yourself. And then I'm going to leave you, and maybe 14 days later or so, you're going to have a court hearing. What are you going to do in 14 days? That's a good point. They just take the guns. They don't remove the so-called dangerous person from the home or the That's situation. Right. That's right. So now you, you've given them 14 days to stew before you get a court hearing, 10 to 14 days. Yeah. And then you don't think I can go over to relatives without them knowing it and, and, and get a gun or my neighbor. <laughs> you know, you can have access to weapons, right? So this, of this, course. this does nothing but extreme, you know violates your constitutional rights. Yeah. There's so many pitfalls and so many dangers. And you'll have liberal leaning judges and prosecutors taking advantage of this. That's why they made it so I can go to Ann Arbor, I can go to Detroit and file one of these you know, extreme uh, risk protection orders. People that aren't even in your community that don't even know you or anything about you. Just somebody, it's, that's well right. there's, there's that old saying, he said, she said, right? Yeah. But this is just like she said because you don't even get to go in there and say anything until your gun's already gone. Right. Now, back to this topic here, because a lot of my viewers are getting nervous because they're saying, oh, hell no. Somebody comes to my door and say, I want your guns. They're going to tell them no. And people are like, at least somebody in the state's going to do that. They're going to tell somebody, get oh, yeah. off my lawn. I'm not that's giving right. you my guns. And that's the dangerous part about it. And that's why I, I was really proud of uh, Sheriff Murphy when he said that he's not going to put his people at risk. And that's the very reason that I would do the same thing. I'm not going to send a deputy out there because we, we're, we already go out and we, we execute warrants on misdemeanors and felonies right now. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they, they have due process. They've already violated the law. So the, for us, the, the, the warrant is, is legit. Now, you're talking about a warrant versus a protection order. Yeah. The protection order is without due process and it violates your constitutional rights. The warrant is a valid warrant issued by a court that we have to... And you have a higher to. standard of evidence That's to get right. a warrant than you have to to get a um, red flag. That's correct. And then we have to, uh, you know, go out and, and, and affect an arrest in that, in that situation. But the other ones are crazy. For me, it's just nuts to put a police officer at risk. To, and then you got to remember our district. Our district is rural. Yeah. So, you know, we don't always have two or three cars to send out on every, every uh, an arrest, right? So it's dangerous for the homeowner, the gun owner, clearly. It's potentially dangerous for the deputy or the police officer. Now, here's the kicker. This is from the attorney general when she did a news release, press release, just a couple weeks ago. Right. First of all, she says she's going to go around to the state and educate as many people as possible, members of the public, law enforcement, judges, and others, about the importance of these laws and how they can best be utilized. So she's going to teach people about how to utilize these red flag orders, right? Now, this is just my opinion. You don't have to opine on this. I think she's going to try to teach people to flag as many people as possible based exactly. on what she's saying, right? So is there going to be an opposing point of view? Are there going to be, is there going to be discussion? Or is she just going to impose her, her will on some of these judges? Is she going to go, like, say, to Livingston County? Yeah. Our prosecutors are Republican. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we do have six judges and most of them are Democrats. I think we have two Republicans as judges. So are you gonna be inclusive of everybody or are you just gonna go around, in her case, are you gonna just go to Detroit, Ann Arbor, the more liberal? That's a good question. Have you been invited to go with her to help? No. Talk? Okay. Because you know we have, we have concerns on the other side of the issue and I'd like to also let everybody know that, that red flag laws, we already have what 
over what twenty thousand laws on the books. Yes. yes. And you know, many of those, obviously, overwhelming number of those are are gun laws. And what we've seen with the MSU shooter is uh, discretion by the prosecutor who failed to uh, to charge that that individual with a five year felony, which would have prevented him from buying the two weapons that he bought to kill the MSU students. They don't want to talk about that stuff. But discretion always comes into play on, on every case. I don't care what county you're in, the prosecutor has discretion based on the facts yeah. uh, and his personal opinion. We had a prosecutor in Livingston County that was a prosecutor for 24 years. And when the CCW laws passed, I think in 2000, we had a gun board back then, if you remember the gun yes. board process. We had a state police lieutenant. Uh, I was the under sheriff at that time, so I was on the board I representing the sheriff. That. And then the prosecutor, well, he pulled the prosecutor off the, the board, and we had to go to a civilian. The law says then you have to go to a civilian person appointed by the county board of commissioners. Well, what happened is I called Dave and I said, listen, I said, you know, don't pull Dave, uh, the chief prosecutor off. We, we need him. We need three law enforcement people. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, I don't believe anybody should have a gun. But here's a Republican saying that. So he ran eight times and was elected 24 years. And he didn't believe in the Second Amendment, apparently, right? Mm -hmm. So I've often, when I talk, I often say, you, you got to know who you're voting for. you got to know their position on issues. And that's why the resolution that we did in 2020 and the most recent resolution that the county board, that's why it's important to get votes on this stuff because then they can't hide from their votes. Yes. You know, I voted for this or I didn't vote for it. You either do or you don't support the Second Amendment. You know, it's not a wishy-washy issue. Yeah, so this is on the local level where people should be following this stuff right. because in your community, you're looking at possibly somebody coming to your door because an ex-girlfriend or wife is ticked off. Here's the next thing that the Attorney General said that's very startling in my opinion, quite frankly. She said, and for those law enforcement, for those in law enforcement who refuse to enforce these important orders, let me say this loudly and clearly. I will make certain that I find someone with jurisdiction who will enforce these orders, Nestle said. What does that sound like to you? Well, I have a couple couple concerns. First off, the county sheriff enforces all civil. You know, we, we on, on uh, forfeitures of homes or property or civil issues, the sheriff de deals with those issues, right? If we have to go out and, and processing, if we have to file a, a civil order for like let's say uh, they're taking your home or that you know the banks are for sure. foreclosure we deal with all the, the civil issues that the state police do not so I'm, I'm wondering how she's going to enforce the state police and i'm not you know i'd have to check but i don't think the state police can enforce civil law i think that's a that's an important issue to research but in my career the, the county sheriffs have always been the ones uh, to do all the postings and the foreclosures on the homes, and the state police don't deal with that stuff on so, civil violations. So I don't know how she's going to have the state police now enforce civil, because this, this, as you said earlier, this this starts off as a civil infraction. It's a civil infraction. I'm glad you reminded us earlier how quickly it could become criminal, though, on yes. your front porch, if you were to set the door in the in the deputy's face, if you were to give him a shove, anything like that, it could be a felony instantly, right? Yes. So she's going to send somebody. Now, currently, Mike Murphy's a sheriff of Livingston County. Just pretend you are right now. Okay. What if you were the sheriff, as we see, sitting, you know, in Livingston County, and Dana Nessel called you up and said, hey, you're under orders from me, or I'm going to ask you to, or is there anything she could tell a duly elected sheriff that would force him to go out and do these red flag laws? No. No, she could, she could try to threaten him or to you know, open up an investigation. She can do all those things, but the fact that it's a, it's an unconstitutional uh, order, you know, I, I think Murphy is standing on, or I would be standing on very solid yes. ground. And I don't know how they're getting away with this in other states. Um, the Supreme Court in, in Connecticut, I think has had it since 99. I know Florida just passed it over the Parkland. They yes. passed it in 2018. So I don't know how these other states are getting away with uh, enforcing these laws. They're kind of not, though. And this is what's interesting. People ask about lawsuits. From what I understand, we want to wait until we have standing. In theory, you could pre-file a lawsuit right now. But yes. if you do, that could be bad because it could set a bad precedent before you actually have 
somebody with good standing. So that's what's interesting. And there is no actual case law right now. There's nobody that's pre-filed a red flag lawsuit, lawsuit yet. Okay. The, the, all, the, all the court cases we have, and there's one in New York that's looking pretty promising, where as of right now, it looks like they're actually going to overrule New York's red flag law. So there is some interesting stuff that could be turning the tide. But well, I would, I'd be interested in the, you know, the, the, the situation in Maryland. I would, I would really, that's the first one that I'm aware of that somebody lost their life trying to enforce a civil infraction. Well, there was another incident in Maryland, actually, too, that was a few years earlier that had the same type of thing. Now, I want to ask you real quick about Michigan. In some places for these extreme risk protection orders, see, here, here's basically how I understand it. It starts off civil, but then if you refuse to give the guns up, say you just peacefully and calmly say no, then they can go and turn it into now a search warrant to come in and take a warrant to actually seize the property, That's right? right? That's right. Now, I don't know if Michigan has this. I don't think we have no-knock warrants, but in some states, they just come in at 3, 4 a.m. and just battering ram your door without even, you know, they yell police as they're kicking your door in. That's usually on, you know, high-risk entries for drugs. Okay. Because you're dealing with very dangerous people. But on these type of things, I, I really can't see that happening because they have to, part of the process is, is they have to verbally notify you first. Okay. And then once they've done that, you can immediately, well, you're not taking my guns. And then I, I can spend two or three minutes explaining to you why I think you should let me do it. Yeah. But there's, you know, the officers. Not that you would do that. You're just saying they, yeah. Yes. So I, but there's officers out there that would immediately, oh, you're under arrest for failing to comply with this court order. And then what's your natural next reaction is, what are you talking, you know, so you back up or you pull away? Now you've committed a felony. And it's, it's, it's crazy that we've got to this point when we have so many laws on the books. I, I talked to you earlier about, you know, these guys are going to take your guns if you comply. They're going to leave you after telling you that you're a danger to yourself. But I, I've always, and I've picked up many people, uh, I can go in and file a petition to have you, to pick you up, mm -hmm. and then and take you in for evaluation, yeah. whether it's 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours. I've done that countless number of times, and so have our people. That's a different situation than this. And there's more due process than that. Yeah. Than there is this. That's right. And that's the crazy part about it, is I'm going to leave you in your house to start thinking about it and, and getting mad and, and, and potentially you, you could, you know, at that time, go get a gun and, and hurt somebody where before you really wasn't a danger. Yeah. It could take a perfectly calm person and make them go berserk if someone's there to take their gun. I'll give you another situation that nobody's talking about. I come to your house, Mike, and I say, okay, Mike, I'm, I'm here to take your guns. And yeah. uh, you comply. Let's say you comply and you give me all your guns. And I say, have I got all the guns? And you say, well, my wife owns two. Yeah. Now, well, you've got to give me her guns, too. Because it can be constructive possession of well, the firearm. Well, she's committed no, nothing. There's, the petition isn't against her, but now... But she's in I'm, the house. Yeah, but now I'm taking her guns. So where does this all stop? There's a sheriff, that, and I haven't... I haven't looked into this, but there's a sheriff down in Florida oh, that, is, that has violated this over and over um, just to get in your house on search warrants, yeah. you know. So there's, there's so much room for abuse all the way along this, this, this whole process. And it, for me, it just, you know, you're violating our constitutional rights. Yeah. Um, and, the, and the sheriff is the constitutional sheriff, and it's his job. But you, you've got Democrats around this county that still will enforce these red flag laws that are Democrat sheriffs. Yeah. Um, and, and that, for me, is scary because they're, they're violating their oath of office. They're not standing up for the people that voted for them, you know. That's the most important thing is everybody, whether you're a state lawmaker, a sheriff, city hall, county commissioner, township trustee, it doesn't matter. If you take an oath... The Constitution right. is supposed to be your guiding light, not... Well, the unfortunate part now, you gotta, you got to start paying attention where you live. Like if you live in the city of Lansing, I can almost guarantee you that Lansing PD will enforce gun laws. They will enforce these flag, red flag laws. Well, that's because, an interesting part, too. If you're within a city limit, is that then up to the chief of police and his right. direction? That's right. And then his oversight with the city council and mayor's office exactly. and all that? Yeah. I don't know. See, there's now you got to pay attention to what county you're in. If, if it's if you want, if you're if you're a constitutional person, 
and your your personal free speech, and you believe in the Constitution, now you got to pay attention to where you actually live. And does do you have a liberal uh, prosecutor? Do you have a liberal sheriff that's going to violate your rights? Yeah, yeah. You know, and it, that's that's what it's getting down to. And now we see legislation that's going to come forward next week that's going to attack the First Amendment. There we go. There we go. Yep. It's one thing after another. Now that they're going after the guns, yeah. um, and now they're going to be going after uh, free speech. In our country right now is in, is in peril, whether people realize it or not. The, the Second Amendment is, is, is the catalyst that they're using to go after all this other stuff. Yes, and, and this is a gun confiscation scheme. Yes. Because we've said it no matter what. They don't take the dangerous potentially, even if they were dangerous, they don't take the person away. They're just taking the guns right. and all the ammunition and everything that goes with it. I was on the I was on the county board of commissioners for a while, and prior to that, I was on the gun board. And I can tell you firsthand that all all the gun permits that we issued, uh, there was only uh, one case that we could go back on and say, okay. Uh, and I'm talking about thousands of gun permits. Just one case where I'm thinking, well, we probably shouldn't have issued this guy a gun really? permit. That's just, it. Just one case. And there's, there's always going to be one or two, and the, and the, and the people that oppose the Second Amendment or, or in favor of the red flag laws, they're going to point to that and say, see what happened? Yeah. Well, we can already point to countless number of, look at the MSU shooter. Yeah. You know, he had access to a gun because a liberal prosecutor didn't do her job. Well, how many laws do you think it would take before we would never, ever, ever have anyone hurt anybody? Do you think 500 gun control laws would be enough? That's, you could pass 2,000 gun laws. And we're all humans. It, I talked about the discretion, yeah, right? Yeah. It depends on on the uh, prosecutor. Are you going to enforce the laws that are already on the books? Look what happened in Oxford. That's a great example. Yeah. The prosecutor over there did charge the parents, and those laws are available for the prosecutors to already charge. If you don't, if you don't store your your weapons properly, they can charge you. Yeah. You know. So all of these laws are already in place. So why are they going after the red flag laws? Why are they going after additional legislation that that affects the law-abiding citizens? It's got a lot of people worried, and I think for good reason. I think there is going to be some potential for for violence happening. To put it bluntly, I think bad things could happen. And I'm I'm afraid of that as well because we're we've got a great country here. I mean, we've got a lot to be proud of, uh, but unfortunately, the more that you uh, violate the Constitution and violate people's rights, law-abiding citizens yeah. that have done nothing wrong, the more that I think they're going to stand up and say, hey, enough's enough. So that's that's what scares a lot of us as well. Yeah, I can't disagree with that. You know, I, yeah. I, I feel the same. I feel very strong about it. Well, you've been on both sides of it. You, yeah. You're not, you're not currently carrying a badge right now. You're no longer in the, in the, um, in the policing business, per se. You're not a sheriff anymore, but you have been a sheriff, and I mean, what, what, you well, you don't want them to show up to your house tomorrow, or I feel know, the same way. I ask I, them for your guns. Yeah, the first thing I'd say is, who filed the petition and what's the case facts? What, what, why are you? No, like I, I can't tell you. That's right. We don't know anything. That's right. And no. that, and that person that filed the petition against you, I don't. They can remain anonymous through the whole process. You'll never know who that is. Yeah, and then a year later they can go and try to renew it again. Yeah. They can basically try to keep you with this forever. I'm going to conclude with this because we've had a good talk. This is really getting people nervous. So let's just assume right now, right now it's Murphy. You can say it was you because I don't want you to speak for somebody else. But right, right. So let's just say Murphy, or if you were sheriff, isn't going to enforce these red flag laws. He gets one from a judge and he's like, nope, I have to follow my oath. What is? What could this mean? Is she sending someone to, like, should people be afraid that there's going to be, like, military coming in or a SWAT team? Or, I mean, I, I would be very concerned about her comments because... Uh, again, uh, you're talking about a law-abiding citizen. Uh, if the sheriff, who's a constitutional sheriff, recognizes and refuses to violate his oath of office and send his officers there, then what's the next thing? Is it the military, uh, the state police? And I can tell you right now, I have a lot of friends that are state troopers, and they're against this. They don't want to be put in a position yeah. uh, to come to your door and ask for your weapons. But I, I, I'm wondering if, if that's a possibility that... Maybe the state police can get authorized to, to, to enforce civil infractions against the red flag laws. Well, so we'll that's, look that's into it further. That's a concern of mine as well. 
Yeah, if you can get some information maybe from your office, use some of your resources to find this out because it's a very interesting topic. Who are these people? And Yeah, is it the military? But I can tell you, if you live in the cities, uh, especially most of the cities are, are very liberal, yeah. leaning, and these red flag laws are going to be enforced. That's interesting, though. Yeah. Most of these real liberal leaning tend to vote Democrat. The Democrats were the ones that voted for this. I wonder if a lot of these people yeah. know that their own public servants they elected are actually going to be... You know what I'm getting at. Yeah, that's a, that's that's what I've been thinking. How They're the ones that are going to be... Well, you, you've got... you know I, I can't tell you right now off the top of my head who the Democrats are that are sheriffs. But I know they're out there. Right. They've already said that they will enforce the red flag laws. MSA has already come out and said that they... They endorsed this without the support of all three, all 83 sheriffs. They just randomly came out and said this, and okay. so did the chiefs of police. Yeah. So I'm very concerned about that, you know. Um, and then that's the problem, too. A lot of people, my viewers, are like, well, screw the police. The police all support this. Well, that's because the two associations, the sheriffs and chiefs, said they support it. So now a lot of people assume every cop in the state of Michigan now supports this. They don't. You're saying that's not true. That's not true. Okay. And I know a lot of the troops don't support it either, but the colonel works for the governor, and the governor does sign, you know, she signed this legislation. Yeah. So they're in a horrible position where they have to. And, I, again, I would, I would be concerned and, and see how this plays out. The state police have never enforced civil, civil issues. It's always been county sheriffs. Okay. So keep an eye on that part as, as well. But you bring up a great point. Can she activate the uh, National Guard? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know. All right, well, there's more to this, and we'll come back and talk about it again well, later. My thing yes. was it that she, they would, what they would do is, if they wouldn't file it in Livingston County, they'd file it in Ann Arbor, right? Okay. And still bring our people from... I, I talk about Livingston County because Livingston County is probably 70% Republican and conservative, so... They wouldn't normally, you know, file that because they know that our sheriff's position. They know that the prosecutor is Republican, and he believes in the Second Amendment. So my guess would be that they would go to a, a liberal-leaning jurisdiction. Now, now, let me ask you this then: If it happens in Ann Arbor and a judge gives the order there, can an Ann Arbor cop come and execute one of these in Howell or Brighton? Yeah. Uh, well. See, that's a, that's a good issue. I've never seen an Ann Arbor cop giving speeding tickets in Brighton before. They, have, they haven't got jurisdiction. So, that's, that's so a how good would that question. work? Can a Washtenaw County sheriff come into Livingston County no. and serve a warrant or an order? No. And we couldn't go to their county. And we only have jurisdiction or rest powers in our own county. Now, the state police obviously have jurisdiction in the entire state. So that, that's going to be an interesting, you know, her comments are going to be Who is how she's how she going to enforce that. Okay. Well, we will find out and do some more research and come back for a part two later. If I could say one more thing yeah. before, we're, we're in a dangerous position right now because uh, elected officials are being elected that believe in violating their rights. And we, I still believe we, we're, we're a red state and we're in a situation now where independents uh, have to have to kind of wake up and side with uh, the Republicans because we, we have Democrats on the House and Senate and the governor's office. We can't stop anything right now. So in, in, if you follow my webpage or you follow some of the other, we're, we're trying to post all these crazy things that are happening to give you a, an idea of what we're dealing with. It's very frustrating because we can't stop it. So elections do have consequences, and I've said that over and over and over. Know who you're voting for. Um, I've, I've had so many people tell me that they're, they're going to stay home and not vote. Yeah. And that, that worries me and scares me because your vote does count. We had 64% come out in the last election. We're normally we're at 80% or 84 If people stay home, this is what happens. Yeah. Our Constitution, uh, your rights are going to be eroded uh, continuously going forward. So it's very important that people get out and vote in 24 and they're currently steamrolling our Second Amendment right now. That's and it's right. only going to get worse. And check out the description. I'm going to leave links to his website, Facebook, so you guys can keep track of what he's doing and get more information on these topics. I, well, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate your work. And I'd yeah. like to shout out for you for all the good work you're doing. Uh, Rob you. 2A in Livingston County does a great job. Yes. And it's, we all have to stick together. We all have to come together and fight for our constitutional rights right now. All right. Thank you. Thanks for watching and have a good one.